This is the Bugatti Chiron, the car that could make the Veyron look like it's going backwards for the bargain price of just 2.4 million euros. That's about 2.6 million dollars at today's exchange rates. It's the follow-up to a car that was very much all about the numbers, and so the numbers seem like a pretty good place to start. The Chiron is packing an 8-liter W16 engine that fires out 1,500 horsepower and 1,180 pound-feet of torque. That's about 10 times the power of your local friendly MX-5 Miata. If that sounds a bit familiar, that's because the Veyron had a remarkably similar engine, but this one's been strengthened and optimized to the tune of 300 additional horsepower, or two more MX-5s. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes less than 2.5 seconds, and the Chiron's top speed is somewhere north of 260 miles an hour. Even Bugatti doesn't know how fast it'll go. But it's not just the engine that's been optimized. The Chiron is far prettier than its predecessors, far more sculpted and subtle, full of amazing details, and even a few secrets. See that curve in the middle of the car? That's meant to evoke company founder Ettore Bugatti's signature. Those headlamps are called eight eyes, guess why? And the rear brake light, that's a single piece of metal with 82 LEDs in a single brilliant strip. There are so many details here, you could truly get lost. The interior is pretty special as well, unlike anything else on the planet. Materials are superb, touch anything you like in here, and you will never be disappointed. The overall effect is almost imposing. Immense care has gone into designing everything, including the stereo, which is remarkably good. Bugatti calls this the world's fastest concert hall, and they're not wrong, but the real symphony is out back. All that noise is filtered through the four turbochargers which now work in a two-stage series. At low RPM, only two of those turbos are engaged, but once you hit 3800 RPM, the other two kick in and kaboom. Power is routed through an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission that's basically a reinforced version of the Veyron's. First does 65 miles an hour, second will hit 106. It has all-wheel drive, very necessary, and the power goes to the road via a set of Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires that fit like regular rubber. The Veyron had to have tires that were slightly too small, stretched to keep the wheels from spinning on the tires at hard launch. No more in the Chiron. Bugatti could have simply made a faster Veyron, but that wasn't enough. They wanted to make the best car the world has ever seen, so it had to be engaging and fun to drive, but also manageable and comfortable. Thankfully, through the magic of electronics and drive modes, this one car can be all those things. And when you're feeling a bit saucy, it even has a drift mode. Focus RS, eat your heart out. Much like its predecessor, the Chiron isn't a light car. It weighs around 4,400 pounds, roughly the same as the Veyron Supersport. And that's despite a carbon fiber body. Thankfully, 420mm 8 piston brakes up front and 400mm 6 piston brakes at the rear offer plenty of stopping power. And with that slippery body, a flat underbody, and a new front splitter and rear diffuser, the car is far more aerodynamic than Grandpa Veyron. So you've heard all the numbers and now what you're surely wondering is what is this car actually like to drive? And the answer is, it's pretty remarkable. We did a lot of time on the highway to get out to some twistier roads and it's, it just feels pretty much like a normal car if you ignore all the incredible luxuries that we have in here, of course. It drives very comfortably, it's not that noisy despite the fact that we've got some massive 20, 21 inch tires on this thing. It's a very comfortable car. But then when you get out in the twisties, it actually feels really nice. This is a very heavy car, over 4,000 pounds, so there's a lot of mass to move around, but it feels remarkably nimble. The steering is light, but very precise, and the power delivery. Oh boy, okay. All right. <laughs> this feels like a freight locomotive. It just goes and then it just keeps on going. The torque curve in this car is flat as a plateau, 1,500 horsepower under your right foot at all times, and this is definitely a car that will get away very quickly, but it's still very manageable and very tractable to drive just in a normal way. But of course, a car like this, you don't necessarily want to drive in a normal way too often. 
you want to really get on it and have a little bit of fun. And when you get on it a little bit more, it responds immediately. And any rev, any gear, it just goes. And it's got so much grip. It feels so incredibly controlled. And then when it's time to scrub off speed, which is quicker than you would probably like, especially on a twisty road like this, the brakes are incredibly reassuring and incredibly powerful. But unlike a lot of supercars, which have very twitchy and hard to modulate carbon ceramics, the brake pedal here is actually really nicely progressive. Use it lightly in town and it's nice and easy to drive again, just like a normal car. But when you really get on that brake pedal, this thing just stands on its nose. And when you look in the mirror, you can see the massive wing flip totally vertical to give you an air brake functionality. This thing will pull two Gs under deceleration, which is about twice that of an average sports car. It's remarkable. It's unlike anything else I've ever driven. After a day in the saddle of the Chiron, my strongest impression isn't how brutal or how fast the car is. My biggest impression is actually just how nice it is to drive. The Chiron feels incredibly refined, easy to burble about through town, or comfortable enough to cover big miles on the highway. But it is still the speed that's most impressive. Chiron is unlike anything else I've been lucky enough to drive. Bugatti has raised the bar again, and frankly, I may never be the same.